at David's grave. Yes, he is here in this open field in sunlight among the few young trees set out to modify the bare facts. He's here, but only because we are here. When we go, he goes with us to be your hands that never do violence, your eyes that wonder, your lives that daily praise life by living it, by laughter. He is never alone here, never cold in the field of graves. Uh, I met Denise toward the end of her life. Um, uh, I only knew her for about seven years and uh, I uh, was her student. I was in the MFA program at the university. Um, I had her for my last quarter, thought she hated my guts. Oh my God. And uh, the last day of, of class, you, you, some people could drive her to her house to have their, their conference. And um, some people didn't get to, and I didn't want to. <laughs> so I drove her, because um, she didn't drive, so I drove her from the university down Lake Washington Boulevard to uh, Seward Park, where she lived. And uh, we sat at her big kitchen table and um, had a conference, and uh, uh, she, she said that she really liked some stuff I did, and she, she didn't like the other stuff that was funny. So. Um, yeah, so, but it was uh, raining when I left, and so she lent me her sweater. She was, she was concerned, so she lent me her sweater. And in the summer, I received a, a postcard saying that her part-time personal secretary was leaving, and she needed a replacement. And so I, I thought, well, okay, I'll go, because I knew a lot of people, and I'll just get her hooked up with the right person. So I went down there, and by the time, and I showed, I gave her back the sweater, it was covered with cat hair, and she's, she really liked cats, so she like she didn't, she, she wasn't mad. And um, by the time I left, I'd been taken upstairs, and I'd already typed a poem for her, and I was her secretary, that was that. She, she, so, so, when you're her secretary, um, so you show up at about like 9 30 10 and she's at the table with her tea with her book with her egg and you can smell t like toast and egg you go upstairs and type on the electric uh, typewriter and um, then at lunchtime she yells and you come downstairs she and then you bring things down for her to proofread mm -hmm. and then go back upstairs and then at lunchtime she says lunch is ready and each day she's made soup from a mix that she's like augmented in some way. And so she'd serve it and then she'd like testify about what she did. So, this time, you know. So, and sometimes you'd have, get to have honey mead. She liked honey mead. So you get a little honey mead at lunch. Like and after I was no longer her secretary, I was her friend. And um, I, I was, when she, uh, when she died, I was the one, her son was holding one hand and I was holding the other, and so we were very close, and um, uh, uh, Nikolai started a, uh, he made a, a sort of call and response poem, and he was like, this is the mother who, and then he would list something, and here she's dying, and this is the mother, it's very beautiful. Um, <clears throat> David Shattuck started, he did the, um, some kind of uh, keening. And then there were people recited poems, Denise's poems. Uh, I think some of her favorite scriptures. Some of her favorite scriptures, yeah, definitely. And and um, W. S. Merwin, um, some of those. Uh, but it was very people were the, those people were holding hands, and she seemed peaceful. But I I went in there when nobody else was in there, and held her hand and uh, made a visualization and, and told, I talked her through like walking up the steps through her garden, through the stone, the, the rock garden, and then turning around so that she could see the four trees on the, on the far shore that were these dancers, she thought. And um, so I, I feel she went with me. And um, it was a very smooth feeling and it seemed right and she was so well loved and respected and i mean both of those things together and that's super important i think that uh, it was it was love but it was respect love with respect
really so she would talk she could talk about death and uh Irilka said that it was the uh it was the dignity of having of being able to die uh the way one's uh Rilke. Rilke, yeah he said that um to die the death of your inner life so the die die as you live inside and for her to uh have said i'm ill and to and to privilege the illness over over everything else like i can't do this reading i can't uh, that would be completely the opposite of the way she lived inside which was go live forward and wonder her life. The, in the welsh tradition um, things there, there's a there's a, a fey tradition where uh, the other world can bleed through, and that's just a very um, uh, it's just taken for granted. It's just part of life. Especially like in thin areas, is that a word? Yeah, used? yeah, in thin areas. Yeah, place? yeah, yeah. Um, and it can happen in dreams, and um, and she was visited uh, by her her parents, especially her father. But this is the uh, poem she made. Um, about a visitation of her parent, of her parents visiting her, and um, I, I should tell you this: she was living in this in the park, it's in the house by Seward Park, that had this long uh, steps through a, a rockery, up to the house, and so this is an image of those her parents coming up, and then the steps up the side, so she could see them coming up, because she she'd be in the kitchen and you could see their heads coming. Okay, okay. enduring love. It was the way, as they climbed the steps, they appeared bit by bit, yet swiftly, the tops of their hats, then their faces, looking in as they reached the top step by the door, then, as I flung the door open, their dear corporeal selves, first him, then her. It was the simultaneously swift and gradual advent of such mercy after I had been wounded. It was the little familiar net attached to her hat. It was especially the thick soft cloth of his black clerical overcoat and their short stature and their complete comforting embrace. The long dead visiting time from eternity. Did she tell you about that experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, um, and she, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know how some people can be like, oh, you're never going to guess what happened. It wasn't, it was just like, I had a visitation. Would you like a, a, a biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> Did, um, you, you mentioned that, about visitations, that you... You feel like she's visited you as well. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, she does. She's a couple times. She comes, um, she is so, she's Twyla tharping it up. Um, she's got, like, with uh, scarves, and she, she went to ballet, she went away to ballet school during the war, because out in the country to keep the kids safe, um, which is part of why she's an autodidact, like she didn't go to regular school. And um, uh, so in her, and actually, I drove by one time, and I could see her in in real life before she died, doing like a yoga, like a, a dance pose in the window. Just and um, in my dream, she's she she she's she's dancing. Yeah. We are sitting under a gorgeous uh, redwood, I think, tree. Um, that shades Denise's grave at the top of a of a hill. Um, from which we can see a little of Lake Washington. Um, it puts her in her at her place, which is which is sort of at the crown, surrounded by nature and protected. But she's just like look, look carefully, and and be involved in the world, and be involved in the world in every way that you can. So uh, it's your responsibility if you are a poet to, to make poems. It's your responsibility if you're a citizen to speak up. Um, it's your responsibility to live out to the edge of yourself so that others can touch you and then that can become a chain. Um, it, it, she, it's, a, it's, it's like uh, I, I hope that people get that and I think they could get that by reading Denise I do and I think they could also get such a pleasure um, uh, about her the way she looked at the natural world 
I mean, she called the uh, raccoons busy little criminals, you know. <laughs> and um, this heron, this uh, hare heron that she, 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 she observed, she watched. And uh, um, so the w world is in the details, and, and, and she, she saw them, and she, you, like, just read the, and then... I'm going to read that one. Yeah, okay. Um, from below. I move among the ankles of forest elders, tread their moist rugs of moss, duff of their soft carpets. Far above their arms are held open wide to each other or waving. What they know, what perplexities and wisdoms they exchange, unknown to me, as were the thoughts of grown-ups when, in infancy, I wandered into a roofed clearing amidst human feet and legs and the massive carved legs of the table. The minds of people, the minds of trees, equally remote from my attention then, filled with sensations, my attention now caught by leaf and bark at eye level and by thoughts of my own but sometimes drawn to upgazing, and up and up, to wonder about what rises so far above me into the light. It's beautiful to hear that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the breeze catches the leaves, and uh, I just think her spirit. Yeah.